the point. 98.7 CKPM FM. It's 8.15. Good morning. Take your sunglasses with you today and maybe shove some ice cubes down your pants. It's going to be a little hot out there. Uh, Sarah Ramsey's here. How are you, Sarah? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Uh, you're, uh, you're a singer. I am indeed, yeah. Uh, and uh, you've got a little bit of, uh, I guess the talent runs in your family, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, there was no getting out. There was no getting out for me. Your your mom was a vocal coach? She was, yeah. yeah. She And prior to that, she uh, toured with Leonard Cohen as a backup singer. Wow. And she was a ses- session, blah, 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 session singer my whole life. She was the voice of, you got it, Pontiac. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And uh, let, just to, to touch on Leonard Cohen for a second, yeah. because uh, Mr. Cool, just uh, the, such a Canadian icon, but he was loved by... Everybody who likes music liked Leonard Cohen. He wasn't just a, a specific genre for people that, oh, I like this music, so we like Leonard, right? He was just no, an icon. No, he was universal. Yeah. Yeah. And, and seeing him, I've seen him in concert a couple times, and it was just such a very, very romantic. Yeah. 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 Um, now, yourself, you're with a band called The Ticket right now, and you're going to be am. playing Canada Day over at uh, the Plaza at Town Centre Park. Mm-hmm. And who's in your band? Our band is myself, Saffron Henderson. Uh, and our back line guys, we've got Joel Fountain on drums, Scott Tucker on bass, uh, Troy Cross on keys, Alex Whitaker on guitar, Jerry Cook on sax, and Kevin Coles on voice and guitar. Nice, and Saffron Henderson comes from a, a somewhat famous family, too. She does. <laughs> no getting out for her either. Yeah, that's it. Bill Henderson from Chilliwack is her daddy. Um, but yeah, this is, it's going to be fun. You guys are part of a, uh, a battle of the bands kind of thing, and you're against a band called Off the Record. Uh, head to head, full sets of Canadian music. Yep, all Canadian. Now, you got to pick the set list with this, and did you, the band get to pick their favorite songs they wanted to do, or did you sort of take the lead and say, no, we're doing this one, this one, this one, and this one? Uh, we put our sets together in conjunction with one another, so we got to kind of spread out the uh, the choices, but um, we tried to pick stuff that the audience would enjoy, and a, a little bit of a mix of old and new. And What's your favorite Canadian song of all time? Oh my goodness, that's not a fair question. Well, it could, well, I guess it could change day to day, couldn't it? It does. I, that's, I never have an answer when people ask me my favorite because there's just so much great stuff to choose from. Yeah, you grow up, I mean, with, with everything from Burton Cummings, his voice with the Guess Who, uh, you know, and then you've got the Randy Bachman version with BTO, and then you've got Chilliwack and their version of Reno, you know. Oh, and man. Brian Adams. There's just so many cool songs out there. Really, truly great Canadian songwriters, great Canadian voices, great Canadian. So this is kind of cool. So you're doing this. It's on the Plaza stage, and it's sponsored by the TD Bank Group. Um, It is all part of Canada 150, and this is free. It is free. Good family event outdoor. There's there's music all day long at this event. I know. You can sing and you can dance. So we're going to talk a bit more about this and a bit more about you, but you've got a a somewhat uh, famous brother, too. (laughs) Yes, I do. Uh, my brother is Josh Ramsey, who uh, is the lead singer of Mariana's Trench. And uh, you sang a lot of background vocals and vocals on his albums. Are there albums? I have. Well, I actually started out in his band oh, way back okay. before it was actually Mariana's Trench, when it was called Ramsey Fiction. I was six months pregnant, and I was the keyboard oh. player and, and singer, and we had this genetic blend. It was very cool. So I've just kept singing on his records. Nice. I thought it would have been called Mariana's Ditch before Mariana's Trench. <laughs> but <laughs> Here's some Mariana's Trench. This is Stutter, 98.7 The Point. Ninety-eight seven, the point. Mariana's trench. Uh, that's big brother. No, little brother Josh. Little, right? brother. little brother Josh. <laughs> so, um, your he's uh, your little brother. Now, did you get him singing, or was it just part of the thing you started singing? Because your mom and your grandma and your grandpa and everybody else sang. Everybody in our family sang. So it was, you know, I was in high school before I realized that most families didn't sit around the piano and sing in four part harmony at night. I just thought that was everybody's family. <laughs> so we grew yeah. up with it. Nice. And did you have a TV then, too, or was it the piano was the focal point? We did have a TV, but there was a lot of music in our house. Nice, because your, your grandpa was a sax player or something? or Yeah, my dad's dad was a sax player. My dad's mom was a singer and a tap dancer in vaudeville. My mom's parents were both amateur musicians, 
and uh, and then my dad was a drummer and singer, and he ultimately went into advertising. My mom was a singer. She became the rock and roll voice coach here. Nice. And uh, there, it's funny because you do some vocal coaching too, right? I do, yeah. Now, it's not so much, you don't need a vocal coach for just singing. If you're a voice artist and you want to get into that, you help them with vocal coaching and that too, don't you? I, if you use your voice, I can help you figure out the best way to do it. I think I need to come and see you because I need help every now and then. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm one level is like, Bleh, and I got, <laughs> but unless I get excited, then I'm like, twacking like that. Uh, so you, you do background vocals, and you've, you've worked with a, a lot of the people, and the one that, that stuck out right away was Paul Rogers. Yeah. Um, Paul, of course, started with Free. Well, when he became known, he was with Free, and then he went over to Bad Company, and then he had his solo career. He's played with The Law, he's played with The Firm, and so many other people. And uh, what was your... Did you get to actually spend any time in the studio? Because Yeah. Uh, you, so there was, because a lot of times as a singer... Uh, the artist might not even be there. You just go in and do the backing tracks, and the artist will be someplace else. So you actually got to spend time with them. I did. and There's a funny story here, actually. I got uh, called in. Uh, a friend of mine, Linda Kidder, who's a fantastic singer, uh, she was doing this session with a mutual friend of ours, Pat Glover, an engineer. And So they called me in to do Bee Gees together, <clears throat> and uh, it was in some guy's house. And I lived in White Rock at the time, and... We were in some guy's house, and the studio was set up in the bedroom, and we were literally all sitting around in one bedroom, and they were just very quiet while we sang. I had listened to Paul Rogers for years. I had no idea what he looked like. Yeah. So we're doing this tune, and he, you know, the guy that we're working for leaves to take a phone call, and so we take a little break, and as he's out of the room, thank God, <laughs> I said to Linda and Pat, God, you know, this song, it really reminds me of that old Bad Company song, Seagull. And they both looked at me and went, well, yeah, so that's this guy. <laughs> I had no idea. That, that is hilarious. But Paul, as I've said many times, has been the, just, he's the best rock and roll singer there oh, is. He's such a voice, yeah. man. And uh, I, let's, I'm going to play Seagull right now. Yeah. This oh, is, that's my favorite Bad Company tune. And a lot of people are like that. They say, what song? And it's, uh, it's Seagull. So this yeah. is Seagull on 98.7 The Point. Ninety-eight seven, the point. That's bad company and Seagull. That's uh, Paul Rogers and the the funny Paul Rogers story that uh, Sarah <laughs> Ramsey has. And it, it's interesting because you can be in a room with somebody and not know who they are and just have a conversation. And that's happened to me a number of times with other people too because I'm not one of those people that you know. I just listen. I don't really look. Exactly. Music isn't a visual thing yeah. to me. I can go and hear live music and sit there with my eyes closed. Yeah. It's it's an audio experience. It's not a visual experience. So I often don't have a visual of the artists. Now, you say that, and that brings me to a thought. A friend of mine was talking about how some of the bands around now just have the name. They don't have the uh, the original players sometimes, like Foreigner, right? Mm -hmm. So there's not really an original member that plays at times. Sometimes... Um, one of them will come back and play, but that's it. And then Yes is coming to town, and John Anderson is not with Yes. What are your thoughts on guys or girls who can actually take the place of a lead singer when you go to see a band and pay 100 bucks a ticket or something? Um, I think it's a little weird when there are no original members of the band. Um, well, I shouldn't say. I mean, if maybe there wasn't an original member, but guys that have played yeah. 20 years in the band, okay. Um if you're replacing a singer, um, you know, the one that springs to mind, because I just watched the documentary, is the, the guy in Journey. Yes. And But you know what? He sounds killer. He's a fantastic singer. I think the rest of the band is all still yeah, pretty the original much, yeah, guys. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And see, that's okay. I, I'm okay with that. I think when it's... When there's not a whole lot of or like original foreigner, content, yeah, yeah. I, then aren't you kind of paying to see a tribute band? Yes, exactly. Good, you're on the same uh, same yeah. plane, same line. Yeah. However, now, as long as you know what you're paying for yes. going in, if you're willing to spend the dough and that does it for you, go to town. 
Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you're right there. So uh, Sarah Ramsey's part of the ticket. Uh, they're doing an all-Canadian uh, Battle of the Bands kind of thing over at the Plaza Theatre in Town Centre Park on Canada Day. You're going against Off the Record, and you guys are doing Canadian songs head-to-head. So is it like, is it set up so you're both on the stage? and No, Off the Record will do their set yeah. first, and then we will do our set, and then we'll come together for... A song or two at the end. Nice. And it's all being refereed and <laughs> a lot of audience participation. Good. I think. Audience participation is the best thing because it's nice. And the have you the the Plaza Theater is so cool. It's like an amphitheater, and the backdrop is Lafarge Lake, but it doesn't have seats. It's got these big uh, like blocks that you can sit on with grass behind it. So you've got these levels, and it's just a beautiful place to sit and watch all this. That's fantastic. Yeah, I. Uh I'm excited. Yeah, I am too. So uh, Chilliwack, uh, Saffron Henderson, uh, her daddy plays with Chilliwack, and you guys will be doing a Chilliwack song. We will be doing a Chilliwack song. So what's your favorite Chilliwack song? Uh, You know what? I think my favorite Chilliwack song is My Girl, and that goes way back to childhood because I used to watch my brother dance around in his diaper singing gong gong, gong gong, gong gong. (laughs) We went through so many record needles. He was trying to put that on. <laughs> that is hilarious. Do you remind him of that? <laughs> on the regular. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And for people who don't know, her brother is Josh, the lead singer from Mariana's Trench. So next time you see him, say, hey, what do you think of my girl, Chilliwack? <laughs> Here's Chilliwack on the point. Ninety-eight seven, the point. That's Chilliwack and my girl. Eight thirty-seven. It is a uh, a Monday morning. We are playing some Canada songs and some memories uh, because of what's happening over at Town Center Park in Coquitlam. It is uh, all part of Canada One Hundred and Fifty. The celebration. There is going to be a couple of bands doing kind of a Canadian Cam Jam battle of the bands for the finale. Uh, Sarah Ramsey's here. The ticket is her band. And they're going up against Off the Record. Now, uh, Sarah is, um, a, a, she's kind of a big deal when it comes to doing background vocals and vocal coaching and singing and that. Uh, some of the other people you've, um, you've worked with on uh, doing background vocals. Yeah. Oh, I've been lucky enough to sing uh, on uh, a lot of records. Of course, I'm completely blanking on them at the moment. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but... Um, Oh, gosh. Well, one of the cool things about um, working as a vocal coach, I uh, have record labels and producers who send me, because I kind of specialize in rock and rollers. And um, so one of the cool things is that I've had a few opportunities to then go in and sing backups on their record. I sang something on The Wild's uh, recent record. Um, They're sort of a blues rock, ACDC kind of band. And so I get the opportunity to... sing uh in places that i might not otherwise well and, and listening to you talk to me you you sound a bit like you could do the janice joplin thing yeah. very easily <laughs> um so you take the, the the grinding kind of stuff and you sing that and then saffron is a little different in her vocal range yeah i sing um <laughs> in our band i sing a lot of boy songs <laughs> hey how are you doing i'm sarah right. <laughs> i sing lower than half the guys in our band uh, Saf sings all the high stuff. I can do the high stuff too, but uh, I tend to sing the lower stuff because that's what's comfortable in my voice. I wake up sounding like I drank yeah. a fifth of Jack and smoked a pack of cigarettes for my whole life. Yeah, you know the feeling, right? And it's funny because people hear you talk and all of a sudden somebody comes over and says, hey, can I borrow a cigarette? I, says, I don't smoke, <laughs> but you sound like you do. <laughs> and I've sounded like this since I was three. Wow. I grew funny. up doing radio because <laughs> I had this voice. <laughs> Hey, Mom, can I have that bottle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Now, we, we talk about your, your famous family. Um, your brother is uh, the force behind Mariana's Trench. He is. I, it'd be nice to get him in here one day and talk about how... Do you know how he came up with that name? Is oh. it like it's a, it's a, is he a space guy or something? Or? You know what? You will get a different answer every, every time you ask that question. That is something I don't think that they have ever answered, <laughs> honestly. And they make stories up about Russian icebreakers, and it, it, it makes no sense. Yeah. I don't know. 
That's funny. But uh, I always thought it was a slag on some ex-girlfriend, uh, quite honestly. But no, it's something either it's it's on the the moon or Mars or it's in the ocean. It's the deepest part, uh, part of, of the, the ocean. ocean. Okay, there yeah. you go. It is okay. an actual place. Yes. Uh, and I knew that much, but I just didn't know what planet it was on. Yeah, now I know. Ours. That's good. <laughs> ours good. But he, um, so you write songs too. I do. And he writes songs. He does. Now, being a songwriter, you can be a really good songwriter, but it just takes being in the right time at the right place. It does. And uh, this one song that he co-wrote, he was in the right time at the right place? He was. Um, he and Carly Rae Jepsen were friends, and they were on the same label, and uh, they he'd sung a duet with her on one of her records, and um, they did some writing together, and uh, she brought him a song, and he, you know, as, as a good writing partner does, says, okay, I like these parts of it, I think these parts need to be reworked, and... Um, uh, and and uh, her guitar player, Tavish, was part of this process as well. Um, and they they crafted this song that was way poppier than anything she'd ever done before. And from a production standpoint, he went back to sort of old Eurythmic-style string stuff yeah. and brought it in. And then Justin Bieber got a hold of it, and it blew up. It's just amazing, isn't it? So we're talking about Call Me Maybe, and you said Billboard called this the best course in like the last, this part of the century or something? I can't or? remember if it was this century or the last 50 years. or yeah. I, I don't know what the time frame was, but it was, they listed their top 100 courses, and this was number one. Wow, this is Carly Rae Jepsen, uh, Call Me Maybe, 98.7 The Point. Ninety-eight seven, the point. Carly Rae Jepsen, call me maybe. Uh, Sarah Ramsey's here. Her brother co-wrote that song, and uh, Sarah's a singer and songwriter. Uh, Sarah is part of the ticket. They are playing at Canada Day, up uh, Canada Way. It's all part of Canada One Hundred and Fifty over at Town Center Park. And uh, have you been to Town Center Park recently? I haven't. Uh, I, I my kid plays soccer yeah. out in the the athletic park out there so i've been there but i i haven't been so you haven't been there in the last year so now this is cool because what they've done is they have lafarge lake and they've had that there for yeah. well since they converted into a park and they've built uh, a plaza which i call an amphitheater but it's called the plaza and it's a beautiful stage with a cover on it the backdrop is the lake and then they've got the the tiered levels for people to sit you can spread a blanket out and uh, watch it. You can sit down in a chair if you like, but it's just a fantastic backdrop for what you guys are doing. And you wrap up the, the night on uh, on Saturday, don't you? We do. Uh, yeah, there's the Battle of the Bands, and then there'll be some, you know, <clears throat> refereeing thereof. And then uh, we will kick off the fireworks. That's excellent. So, Sarah Ramsey, the ticket. Uh, this is all free for the family. It's an all-ages event. It's going to be a fantastic time. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. And before you go, your website, if somebody wants to find out more about you? SarahRamsey.com. Easy to remember. Good morning, Nissan. Seven, the point. Well, good morning. It is 848. Uh, before Sarah leaves, the ticket party band or the ticket. At your website, we want to talk about this. It has Vancouver's newest and most exciting dance band to hit the lower mainland in a long time. Two stunning and vocally gifted female singers. That'd be you and Saffron. Uh, have a wonderful dynamic on stage. Their song lists the perfect mix of old and new. You can hire them. Um, Kelly Brock, uh, she's somewhat of a deal too, isn't she? She's Kelly's fantastic. She's a force to be reckoned with. She sings in Dr. Strangelove, and she has her own booking agency, Van Hatton Entertainment, and, uh, and she's a good friend. Excellent. Well, that's great. So the name of the band you're playing with, the name of the website? Uh, so I play with The Ticket, and our website is theticketpartyband.com. So once again, it is Canada Day. That is Saturday. It's not the holiday Monday. It's Saturday. It's happening over at Town Center Park, the Plaza Stage. And you guys hit the stage about what time? Uh, the Battle of the Band starts at 8.30, I believe. 8.30, so you're going to go till almost 10 o'clock and then the fireworks. That's the thing. So you can see the fireworks before the fireworks over at Town Center <laughs> Park. Thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for having me. Here's Red Hot Chili Peppers. Give it away on the point.